Greetings everyone, welcome to another episode of The Professionals You Should Know. This show is about uncovering the journeys of professionals from different industries. And today we have the compassionate and insightful Carol Omele, who is an audiologist. Thank you for joining us, it's no a worries. pleasure having you here. So, what is it that you do? So I'm an audiologist. Okay, so what's and, that? And um, audiology is essentially... I guess finding out about hearing loss, um, mm. testing hearing. Um, a lot of people tend to find that though they can hear what is what they think is perfect hearing, there might be other underlying problems. So it's essentially mm. just the, the science and um, investigation of hearing loss, hearing problems and other related uh, issues with balance too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to mention about yeah. balance as well. So. Why audiology? What's your journey? Um, so, really corny story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was always kind of into the whole medical field, uh, yeah. growing up anyway. Mm. My dad said when I was young I wanted to be a doctor, but I think I scrapped that idea <laughs> <laughs> as I got a bit older. <laughs> but essentially, I knew I wanted to do something in healthcare. Mm. Um, and then when I got to college, they were asking about, you know, university courses, what we wanted to do. Mm. I was just flicking through this course guide and I came across audiology. Mm. So I thought, mm, never heard of that before. Mm. Did some research and it's actually something that I found on YouTube that kind of made me, you know, say, yeah, this is it. Really? So essentially it was a video um, on YouTube of this newborn baby, well, not newborn, but this really young mm. baby um, getting a, what we call a cochlear implant yeah. um, for the first time. So mum spoke and... The baby's eyes just, you know, lit up. Yeah. And I was like, okay, yeah, this is it for me. So mm. six, seven years down the line, still in audiology. So, yeah, it's just wow. really fascinating area. And and how, how does it work? Do you go to uni or, like, how, how does it work? So there's there's different ways now that you can become an audiologist. Right. The way I uh, took it on was by going to university so I studied for three years right. um, so it was two year uh, studying and then you've got the third year placement okay. so I went to a hospital in Swindon okay. and essentially I then qualified once I had done that practical because it's like a lot of healthcare mm. routes you have to do mm. some yeah, practice ex essentially like exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. so they have to log you say that you know you're competent now doing this this and that and then mm. you just continue so yeah I did that for three years um, and then graduated, then got into audiology straight away. Right. Yeah. Okay. And, and you said there's other ways? Is there other oh, ways yeah. now? Oh, yeah. So the other ways, um, Specsavers. I don't oh. know if many people know this, but Specsavers also have a hearing um, section of their business. So you've got the opt optical side and then you've got mm. the hearing side. Mm. And they basically just merge the two together. Okay. Um, so in certain stores, you'll find that though you can test your eyes, et cetera, that's, which is what they're known for, you can also get a hearing screening. Right. So sometimes you'll get your eyes tested and they'll say, oh, do you want to screen your hearing to see if there's any issues, blah, blah. Mm. And they'll screen you. It's like a very short test. They test about four frequencies. Okay. If they notice anything abnormal, so if you don't, essentially score what is considered the normal range of hearing mm. then they'll say okay do you want to come back and assess it further right. and then they book you in so Specsavers have that in place um, and there's an actual um, structure in which you can then qualify and become an audiologist but it's slightly okay. different because you've not got logged hours right, officially um, right. not in the same way that they do through the hospital because the hospital is still the highest grade essentially right <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah the hospital is still the highest grade um right. so you can only do certain things within your remit mm. with the spec savers qualification whereas mm. if you go through the hospital sorry go through the um i guess degree route mm. you can then become more qualified um and you're open to do more mm. yeah. and is there any particular story i know you mentioned the story to get you into yeah. audiology yeah. but is there anything that actually reconfirmed once you was in it okay um i had a lot of i had a lot of people when i started working just not to like toot my own horn okay. <laughs> <laughs> but they were just always saying like how professional i was yeah. and how much of a good job i did for them mm. um like comp and it was more just a comparison like they're all like oh i went to this and that person and right. they didn't explain it to me in this way mm. so i felt like there was something in me mm -hmm. um, that 
potentially was meant for that role for me to like I feel like I actually am in my purpose in this role mm. so yeah I had a lot of like patience just say no no one particular no story one, okay okay unfortunately okay. Right. but just like more I guess affirming yeah. from different people that yeah you, you're you doing a great job like your you know your work is really good etc cetera, etc cetera. and how does like an audiology, uh, audiology ass- assessment how how does it work is it just loads of noise and then you, you see <laughs> in a, yeah, in how a does way it work? so um we first so we'll call you in so for example i'm seeing you in a clinic right there'll be an audiology clinic whether that's run through i don't know a hospital or a private um situation so i work in a private private company right now right so you will be booked in for a hearing assessment mm. We'll ask you a series of questions just to get some history mm. about your what we call otologic health, so your ear health, mm. um, just to then see if there's something underlying that will then um, coincide with any results we might see. So if you say, "Oh, my perf- my hearing's perfect, I don't have any problems, etc." There's no history, no like damage, no anything. Then we do something called tympanometry, which okay. is um, a test of the middle ear health. Okay. So that just makes sure the structure behind the eardrum is actually working. So mm. um, there's parts of the ears that people don't really know about, mm. um, but it's all to make sure you're hearing. So the sound that goes directly then to the main organ, mm. which is called the cochlea, is working. Um, okay. So we'll do all those tests. Then we do the main test, which is called pure tone audiometry. We put headphones over your ears and we get you to press a button every time you hear sounds coming from headphones. Okay. Um, we're trying to assess the sensitivity of your hearing. So we're testing the softest sound level that you hear. Mm. Based on that, we then know if you've got a hearing problem or not. Okay. Yeah. And how would someone like how would someone know that they might have a problem? Or is it just by it's, sheer luck? It's that, no, no. What, what so it's usually symptoms and signs. Um, right. So, for example, say you've got a typical age-related hearing loss, someone in their 70s. Right. They're like, oh, the volumes on the TV is going louder. Right. Like, we all have our parents where we start to realise, okay, they're not really clocking on to what they're <laughs> right. saying or right. hearing. Like, we're having to repeat ourselves. <laughs> right, There's right. all the, like, usual signs that right. there might be something happening. Or right. you may just feel like you've got... Um, so other signs of, I guess, not hearing loss, but other ear related issues might be like a lot of pain in the ears. Sometimes okay. people get uh, infections. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there are a few signs and symptoms that can like make you more inclined to then get your hearing test. OK. Yeah. And once you find that out to say mm. that you have a problem, what are like the treatments or modalities that you. So um, depending on what the problem is. Right. If it's, again, like a very basic age-related hearing loss, yeah. um, we can then provide hearing, hearing aids. aids. Yeah. So the main thing um, is hearing aids. But if there are more um, either sinister or underlying mm. problems, then we have to refer you Not to an uh, ear, nose and throat consultant. So they're specialists uh, in literally okay. ears, nose and throat. And they've got um, more ability to research and investigate things mm. that we can't then test. Okay. So some people may have tumors yeah. through like a nerve that connects to the to the um, brain and stuff, and that can be one of the problems that's causing them to lose their hearing. But mm. that's there's other again symptoms associated with that kind of condition. So yeah, okay. there are treatments, there's operations if needed, um, and sometimes it's just a ma- about a matter of taking. Um, products over the counter products for hearing related issues so you know when you get oh, a cold or flu okay, yeah for some people it really affects their ears mm. so taking even like decongestants and stuff can sometimes help the problem oh, yeah okay and what about like i don't know how how much does like airex and all those kind of things impact <laughs> it is it yeah, it's well. a major thing. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm smiling because I, I work in a clinic that does microsuction, which is earwax removal. Okay. And the hearing tests as well. Right. So microsuction okay. is, I guess, a more modern way now of clearing blockages in the ears. It doesn't doesn't just have to be earwax. It can be um, like fluid in the ear. Some people have had like stones from swimming. Not big oh, stones, really? of course, but like tiny little like um, stones from the beach and stuff stuck in the oh, ears. Never- I know, yeah. You see all sorts, but oh, it is mostly yeah. just wax. And some people have chronic wax buildup. So wax gets blocked in the ears constantly. Um, so they oh. have to come to us every maybe year or every few months to get it cleared out. 
Really? So yeah, that can be a major factor. Um, we get some clients in our clinic. They get this build up. It's very debilitating for them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They get it cleared, and they're just like, "Oh my god, I can hear everything yeah. again." Like it, it can be a real problem for people um, mm. if they're unable to hear because. Uh, it's you know one of our main senses, yeah. our ears, but we kind of neglect it because yeah. it's just there. Yeah, yeah. And, like yeah. with a lot of hearing loss, with most with most people who have hearing loss, they'll say it's an invisible disability. Mm. So you're having problems, but because people can't see you, mm. you, you look like you're coping. Yeah, they don't think there's a problem there. So yeah, it's and really interesting. As you mentioned as well, there is a. Um, a balance component yeah, to it as yeah. well so people can lose their balance exactly um, so these again hands. these are uh, conditions that can attack the organ of your your hearing mm. or the balance system so um, we have a structure called the cochlea mm. so that's in charge of hearing Right. And then there's a structure called the semicircular canals. So that's right. in charge more of the balance. Right. Um, and there can be conditions that can affect either one, but mm. with the balance, it's affecting the semicircular canals. There are crystals mm. in them um, and things can happen, make them like move out mm. of position from where they should be. And it can cause something called vertigo. Mm. Um, and yeah, that's really debilitating for some people. Some people have conditions called like Meniere's, for example. Mm. They experience vertigo and it's like, quite scary for them um okay. so yeah there are specialists who audiologists and ent consultants who look into balance vertigo there's different like components within right. audiology okay um, there's pediatric okay. audiology as okay. well but yeah it's like a i won't say like it's a very big field but there's small parts within that field. okay so you know when you're saying about microsuction yeah does all audio audiologists yeah. learn microsuction no or? so i only learned microsuction about four years ago okay um, you don't have to learn microsuction to be an audiologist that's right. just like an added yeah uh, added part to it so i was doing i was doing um loops so it's like a it's a the best way i can get you to visualize what it looks like is like a, a vr set right but you then have a microscope. So it's like goggles, then you've got a microscope there right. with light. And you can look at it into someone's ears. Oh. And you've got a suction machine, which will then vacuum. So you can see what you're doing as you're sucking it out. Wow. So that's like, I guess, more of the basic way. But you can then go into clinics who have more professional equipment. So like a proper microscope right. um, and the vacuum attached to it. And then that um, sucks out the the wax from oh, people's ears or whatever the blockage is essentially who do you feel that appreciates your service the oh most? my gosh like, i feel like patients um government. people who have hearing problems yeah. generally yeah because yeah. yeah it's it's again one it, it's a hidden disability mm. so where people start to have problems they then withdraw a lot more so older patients i'll say mostly because they're more likely to develop these problems. Right, um, so I've, I right. think that's why I've got a little soft spot for yeah. <laughs> old people. Yeah. <laughs> like I'll see them on the street and any little, I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> so I've got a bit of a soft spot for like older people. Yeah. Um, young kids as well. Like I really, so in my field of work, I'd, I want to go into pediatrics. And okay. That's where I'm kind of like working on with, my current job as well. Um, right. But I'm, we only do pediatric microsuction. We don't really do any hearing tests with kids and stuff like that. But you can oh. do that in a hospital setting or or a clinic for children. So you, you can go to Great Ormond Street, for example, right. and have um, a, a clinic for children for hearing. Oh, so there are different equipments? that is, or <laughs> Not spit. necessarily. It's just the training. And right. some businesses, unfortunately, with private... Um, not to shade them, but it is a money yeah. orientated business. So right. they need to see how much money they can get from that. And right. seeing children, it, it has its complex parts. They can't generate so much from kids as right. they can do with adults. adults so. Right, right. Um, but that's not to say like all clinics are like that. Yeah. Uh, just some, unfortunately, don't cater for children in that way. But you can get like children's microsuction and stuff. But yeah, the, in the hospital in the NHS, they do have a pediatric audio, uh, audiology. Yeah, thing. there is a, a audiology kid, yeah. in, in NHS as well. And absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Who so, refers? How does it work so, for referrals? Um, you essentially go to your doctor. You say, I think my child might have a problem with their hearing. Okay. The doctor, for okay, so this can go for everyone anyway. The doctor will look in your ear. If, even as an adult, you mm. say you go to your doctor, you think I've got a problem. They'll look in the ear. 
Um, and if it's not wax, which they'll then probably prefer them for, uh, to get it cleared, which they don't always, they sometimes just say to put drops in the ears. Right, um, yeah, yeah. So this is a bit of shade to doctors. Stop telling <laughs> me to, to put drops in the ears. It's not working. Okay. <laughs> um, so they were told to put drops, but then that can be stuck there for months. Oh, really? Yeah. I had one guy say he was putting drops in for six months and his hearing wasn't improving. Wow. So he couldn't hear for six months because wow. of wax and oil in his ears. Eventually, he then just like researched and came to our clinic and got it cleared out. Wow. So happy. Okay. Um, but yeah, so that's the process. You go to your doctor, you say, I think there's a problem. They'll check it out. If it's not wax, then you get referred to a consultant or whoever else. Okay. Yeah. And is there any misconceptions to your role? Yeah, I think when people say, when people hear that I do audiology, they're like, oh, what music? <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> but I can understand like, why yeah, you yeah, think yeah. that audio, but not necessarily music, just right, sound. Right, um, right. So I think the mis misconception, I've got a friend who says I'm always just clearing work, and like, I'm yeah. doing more than that. <laughs> more than that. Um, I think that, yeah, the biggest one is that I like work with music or work with, clients who do music which is true as right. well um but no i don't generally work with music right, right. <laughs> yeah. fair enough and just randomly what is the uh, the best type of hearing that someone can have oh like, i mean there, what pitch does it go up to or so um normal hearing is anything below 20 decibels so everything between say minus five and 20 right um we we uh, test via a scale Right. So there's a graph where we say you get he your hearing tested. I'll plot the results on a, on a graph. Right. And then um, if your hearing is normal, it has to be below 20 decibels. Oh, below. Yeah, okay. Below. Okay. So that's normal. Right. No, um, perfect hearing would be maybe like around zero to 10. Oh, okay. There are some people scarily enough um that actually have like pitch perfect hearing really but you don't get many oh, yeah, like yeah, that yeah, yeah yeah it's very interesting and do you think everyone should have like a absolutely yeah. <laughs> like i i highly my friends are sick of me <laughs> <laughs> i'm that person in a party saying it's too loud <laughs> Oh no, it was actually bad. I'm sick of myself. <laughs> it is fine. I went to um, meet, meet my friend, one of my really close friends, got married recently, mm. and we were sat next to a table where the speaker was very close. Right. Like, I just kept on having to get up, turn the speaker. Whoever was in charge of the music will come to. I just stood there next to the speaker at a point, looking at him like, "You want me to go deaf? I will see you." <laughs> but no, essentially, um, everyone should test their hearing whether. They're 90 or 10 yeah. years old. Um, if you think you've got a problem, or even if you don't have mm. a problem, treat it like how you do with your eyes, mm. your teeth, you know, mm. those things are all important. And the sooner you catch onto any issues, like the, I guess, the, the better the outcome. Mm. So even if you may have like a degenerative problem, that mm. might basically it gets worse anyways if, mm. when you get older. Because you've got that knowledge that this is the situation, you then know how to manage and cope with it a lot mm. better. Um, like we've experienced some people, like I'm so I'm 30 and I've had some clients younger and around the same age come in with hearing loss. Really? Yeah. Um, and they've and this has been gradually getting worse. They've just said, oh, for years I've just felt like my hearing just it's not clear, but I don't know. And then they get the shock of their life when we say that they've got a hearing loss. So, mm. yeah. And is that mostly to do with, like, loud music? Or it can it... be, but it can really? also be genetic okay, as well. Okay, okay. So, in, again, in our clinic, we get a lot of musicians come in. Um, they, they are not always, like, famous, mm. but s some known people, some more unknown people. Um, but you get a lot of uh, musicians who maybe play an instrument, um, and because of that over years the noise exposure it's developed developed into um a hearing loss really yeah exactly exactly <laughs> yeah, yeah. not to like scare anyone but like it doesn't all it's not always the case yeah um like i've because i've tested musicians as well who have played for years and they hit their hearing is fine yeah um but it's just like best to come to us talk to us about how to look after your hearing yeah. and stuff like that and just see what there is um out there because you don't again you don't know what you don't know, so yeah, it's yeah. just best to try and like tackle these problems at an at an early stage. Fair enough. Yeah. 
All right. So you get your hearing tested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, actually. All right. So what we're gonna do now? We're gonna go to the next part of the show. Okay. It's called um, rapid fire. Okay. It's not rapid. It's just uh, three questions. Mm-hmm. It's like a pick a choice. Or yes or no. Mm. All right. So for our first question, okay. in your experience, mm. do you feel that there's a correlation between hearing loss and cognitive decline? Oh, you've done some research. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, there is, and. <laughs> So the connection essentially is that as we age, mm. um, our brain or parts of our brain starts to atrophy, so they weaken over time. Now, if you're not stimulating it with sound, um, part of our brain has the auditory component, so we're trying to listen to sounds constantly to help stimulate it. Um, I said, as I said, as we age, that starts to atrophy. So essentially, the less stimulation you're providing your brain, the further decline the decline so it's not necessarily a cause and effect but there is a connection between the two mm. we think as audiologists and other researchers so there's been so much like work that have now found that there's some type of connection and i think they're still looking into it a little bit more but yeah there is what we think are a that link makes yeah sense. so okay. essentially Again, the importance of why we tend to recommend hearing aids to people. Because mm. not everyone, you know, that we say has, um, that has a hearing loss and we recommend hearing aids goes for hearing aids. I think oh, there was a, okay. stu- um, a study that showed a certain percentage of people actually get hearing aids after about eight years uh, post-diagnosis. Really? Yeah. And... Is you're, that what it's stereotype? I, I think there's a big stigma yeah, with yeah, hearing loss. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's stigma. a big stigma. The stigma, thankfully, is declining now. I think with, you know, our generation, there's a lot of disabilities that, you know, are now more, uh, we've got more understanding about it and there's not as much, I guess, um, yeah, there's not as much uh, stigmatization on it. Right, but right, um, right. you still have to like accept that people will still feel a type of way if you tell them this is the problem, this yeah. is what you have to do, because it's still considered as an age or mm. like an old person's thing. But yeah, um, the, the essential part of it is really just starting to treat the problem once it's been diagnosed. Mm. Like with glasses, you get told, you, you mm. know, you've got vision issues mm. get glasses mm. corrected mm. obviously when you take it off you're back to normal essentially mm. i keep on hitting your mic <laughs> um but yeah effectively you just want to make sure that you are treating it so that again that cognitive decline doesn't happen so rapidly right. either. okay that makes sense yeah. so for our second question if you had to choose um would you rather focus on improving the sound quality mm-hmm. for someone that has hearing aids or the comfortability of them wearing the hearing aid? Sound quality. Okay. Um, because I think, I mean, essentially both are really important. Mm. So it's hard to say. <laughs> it is hard to pick, to be fair. <laughs> because if something's uncomfortable for you, you're not going <laughs> wear to it. wear yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, I think you can't have one, one without the other. Over, yeah, without the other. Because... You'll either get really good sound quality, good quality hearing aids that are giving you the sound you need. Yeah. But then if you're not comfortable, you're just going to take them out. And if it's vice versa, you have very comfortable hearing aids, but they're not doing anything. You've right. got plugs in your ears. For right, reasons. right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, I take away, I take back what I said. I think you you have to have both. So I can't pick. Is, is that accessible <laughs> <laughs> okay um, <laughs> like we obviously understand you know you know you, 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 that you I'd have to have both sound quality then okay, right. you just have to get used to the feeling of it. <laughs> right right yeah yeah but good. you'll hear at least yeah exactly yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> all right our third and final yeah. question um for your own personal fitness what would you prefer weekly rock climbing mm. or daily tai chi I'd probably say weekly rock climbing. Because ah. um, I think that would strengthen my whole body more. Okay. okay. Um, I okay. think Tai Chi would probably relax me. Mm-hmm. And that would probably be good more for my mental space. Okay. Obviously, I've not okay. done it before. So there may be physical components that would probably strengthen me that I'm not mm. aware of. Mm. But just off the top of my head, I would assume rock climbing would give me more agility and strength okay. more than Tai Chi would. Okay. Yeah. So for our final question, yeah. 
Where do you feel a healthcare industry will be without your professions, audiologists? Oh, mm. um, I think it'd be missing a really big component because uh, we, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I think we'd be missing a really big component. We'd be a big component that'd be missing from the industry because I think again, what we do, even though it's mm. quiet, like mm. you don't really hear a lot about audiologists, mm. it's still so important. Mm. Um, it's like going without uh, opticians. It's like going without um, I don't know dentists. Mm. So all these things are really important for the whole for the whole body of healthcare. Mm. Um, there are a lot of things that have been diagnosed post having hearing tests that people wouldn't know about. So I think if we weren't there, there would be a lot of people distressed. Mm. So uh, I think we play a big component mm. in the general, um, uh, I guess, uh, what word am I using? Just looking for? I think we're important for just the overall being of people, essentially. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and do you see your profession progressing in any way? So slightly, AI exactly. Or... Yeah, 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 yeah. There's been a lot of talk about AI within audiology. We we don't really know exactly how that will work, right. um, or how much of an impact that will have on our pr- profession. Yeah, but yeah. I think it would help us maybe to get assessments done either quicker, okay, um, or with more precision. Oh, so Possibly. you would you would see it more as a helper than I th- a. I think so because I, I think there's still a human element that AI can't give, ah. unless people don't care about that anymore and they right. just need a hearing aid that will do its job. Yeah, because I think with our with my role as an audiologist, um, and with audiologists across the board, mm. there is this um this sensitive part of it that I don't think AI can really, you right. know, tackle. So okay. I think the human element of audiology is still very important. And like, for example, like some, some tools, I've seen like loads of tools on, on like, yeah, <laughs> in Instagram. Their, yeah, where you can, you know, put something in yeah. your ear and you look it on the phone mm-hmm. and you can actually see what's in your ear and then you can do it yourself. Yeah. So, what do you think about that and would you recommend something like that? Or I it... personally wouldn't recommend because okay. I've had a few people. So there are different tools. Right. Um, there's one where I think you, it's like a spiral. So you turn it and you... then it's, it's it's a corkscrew. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I saw that one as well. So I've had a few clients come in after using it because it's blocked their ears. But oh. <laughs> so it's been like a lot of these tools are counterproductive to what they're meant to be doing. Um, but some of them do work and I think it's I don't feel like you should put yourself in that position to you know test it out that way but you know they're they're there and people use it some people get on with it Mm. Um, I think the main thing is because you've not been trained Mm. to clean ears Mm. 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 it's a bit hard to say it's like I don't know you can get tools for like cleaning your teeth as well now that I've seen that I'm interested in but I feel like having a dental hygienist they know no, what they're yeah, doing right yeah, so yeah. i trust them more yeah. rather than to do these things myself but there are things you can use maybe okay. to do basic cleaning around the entrance of the canal i'd say yeah that that's cool for that but anything further into the canal right. just go to a professional for it so like earbuds no earbuds now i'm probably going to get told about <laughs> low audio just why did you say that because <laughs> i'm not completely against them oh okay, yeah, okay. popular opinion i'm not against earbuds but right. it's how you use it okay like with most things so i always say to like use it around the outer part of your ear right so wax and debris also collects around those parts behind your ear right. and then just the entrance oh but don't actually don't put it, push in. it in further than the entrance because uh, what, what you're doing is pushing the wax deeper into the canal okay. so again in the clinic we've had a lot of people come in because they've just shoved wax all the way into the ear some oh. people have gone so far as to perforate the eardrum so they've made a hole into the ear oh, drum. so yeah it's okay. that's why i say <laughs> Just put the tools down and come to us. But for the outer part, sure, the surface level things you can clean it with. Okay. And do you think anything is missing from your profession at all? Um. It could be uh, status mm, or acknowledgement. I or think yeah. I think more awareness. Awareness. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I think 
with with each time I've told people about what they what I do, they're mm. just like, oh, I've never heard about. Yeah. That. I, to be fair, I never had even heard about mine until I actually researched it after coming across it in a textbook. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I think we just need maybe more awareness about hearing and the problems associated with it. Mm. Um. Apart from that, I think we're pretty we're pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, I can see. <laughs> I can see that. No, that's fun. <laughs> No, you've been absolutely amazing. Oh, uh, I really appreciate the knowledge, uh, the experience, mm. and um, just the insight of what thank you too. have given to, to me and to everyone else. So yeah. I really appreciate you coming. You're welcome. And um, where can we find you? So I don't have any major socials, but that's right. changing very soon. Okay, okay. Um, but essentially, LinkedIn. LinkedIn yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> my name, Caro, and then um, in regards to audiology, yeah. loads of people out there. So okay. just type in audiologist near me, or if you want to get a hearing test done, yeah. just type in hearing test locally, um, or go to your doctor, they can refer you. They'll know all the places around that um, can do hearing tests and all these related issues. So. Yeah. What's the, how long is the waiting list for that? Oh, now if you want to go through the NHS, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, months, years, who knows? Um, not now. Okay. <laughs> um, but if you want to go privately, mm. you can find clinics straight away. So okay. again, with uh, the company I work for, mm. they you can type them in and then you can get a same day ear cleaning appointment. Oh, okay, cool. Most of the time, if they're not like fully booked, mm. but essentially they're pretty... Um, available but otherwise it might be like a few weeks wait but nothing too crazy okay yeah. oh, that's cool well again as i said it's been an absolute pleasure um you coming on and sharing sharing Thank your knowledge you. and experience and uh um i really appreciate you joining us no problem thanks for having me anytime <laughs> and uh thank you all for for watching <laughs>